Hello and welcome back to the ultimate guide to spoilers in Minecraft. This is part 2 of the series, so if you want to watch part 1 where we discuss what spawners and instances are, then click the on-screen annotation. Anyway, in this video we're going to be having a look at the basics of how spawners work, so let's get on with them. A spawner will activate when a player comes into range of the block. When activated, the indicator shown in the cage starts to spin. What this means is the spawner will start spawning. Now that it's started, there will be a delay until it first spawns. Then it will continue to use values for delay to generate new delay times. So to explain this a little bit more clearly, I'll have to introduce NBT data, which is what Minecraft uses for various files it saves data to. The spawner has various different tags, but it has three concerning delay. A minimum delay tag, a maximum delay tag, and a current delay tag. The min and max delays are fairly straightforward. All you really need to know is that they are constants that when set will not change. This is unlike the current delay tag. After a spawner has successfully spawned an entity, it will choose a value between the min and max and set that as the current. From then on out, it will count down until the current has reached zero again. This is probably a good time to mention the timekeeping of the spawner. It counts using in-game ticks. All you really need to remember is that 20 ticks are equal to 1 second, and all the values you put into the spawner are measured in ticks. Now just to clear out any confusion, the ticks that I'm talking about are not the same as redstone ticks. Redstone ticks are the equivalent of two game ticks, hence they are 10 in a second. Anyway, moving on. In the initial menus for the spawners, there are a few more tags. There is the max nearby entities tag, which is fairly simple now that you know what entities are. All you really need to know is that what you're doing is checking for entities of the same type that's trying to spawn, which is shown in the identity ID tag. Next, we can discuss the spawn range tag. Now personally, I can't be 100% sure on what this is supposed to do, because I only know what I know about this by conducting a few experiments. Hence, what I can deduce about the tag is that it's the value that a spawner uses as a radius for a region that it checks to see if there are enough entities in based on the max nearby entities value. So, to make it a little bit more simpler, I'm going to give an example. If the max nearby entities value is 6 and the spawn range value is 10, if we have 6 entities in the region of 10 blocks from the spawner, then I believe that it won't spawn again. But if one entity was to leave the region, and to be more than 10 blocks away, then the spawner will spawn again because it's no longer within the region, and it will spawn until the value is satisfied again. So, it is a little complicated, but another tag that can lead on quite nicely from this one is the spawn count tag. Now this is fairly self-explanatory. Basically, it's the amount of entities that would actually be spawned each time the current delay value reaches zero. Now I think we should actually have a look at how to get to all this data and have a look for it for yourself. But first of all, you are going to have to make a spawner. And unfortunately, we just don't have enough time for that this episode. So stay tuned for part 3 where we'll be downloading some software and building some spawners. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have a rate, it would be much appreciated. And if you have any suggestions or questions, leave them in the comment section below. Anyway, that's all for today. If you're new, then subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.